Hey there and welcome back to Mass Effect. My name is Pete and today we complete the missing survey team assignment. In the last two episodes we completed the squad member assignments for Rex and Garrus and I still want to complete this mission and then also one more before returning back to the Citadel. I hope that by that point we are at level 50. If we're not I have to check whether or not we can easily achieve that on the Citadel itself, otherwise we might have to squeeze in one more assignment. For now it's time to leave Tuntau where we completed Rex's mission and we can travel to the Antius system in the Hades Gamma Cluster. Inside a few planets to survey before we get started with the assignment, we can find some uranium, some Matriarch's writings and also a hydrogen deposit. Then we can mark Trebin where the assignment will take place and land. For our squad we will go with Caden and Liara, so heavy on biotics and you will soon see the reason for that. And before we get going, let's quickly spend some talent points on Liara. We have three to spend and all of those will go into first aid. And that means with the next level up we can grab overload for her. And that's actually her first and only tech ability. And something that actually quite often gets overlooked when talking about Liara. We always see her as this true biotic with no real talents elsewhere. But with the electronic skills she does have access to a bit of tech. Even though she's still not as much of a hybrid class as Caden is. And here we are already at our first destination on Trebin. Let's quickly survey this plutonium deposit over here. Now at this point I think a bit of background information on the mission can't hurt. And for that I'd like to present you a Citadel Elevator news report way back from episode 11 of this playthrough. In other news, Exogenicorp is still denying reports that one of their survey teams has gone missing in the Hades Gamma Cluster. When asked why communication with the survey team was suddenly cut off last week, company officials refused to comment. Alright, so we are looking for a missing Exogeny survey team, and we could have also picked up this mission on Novaria. There it would have been locked on a terminal. Anyway, it seems like we have a bit of a mystery on our hands, but before we can solve that we have one other thing to take care of. Over here, next to the debris map marker, we are about to enter combat for the first time. We have a group of scavengers against us, um, that's five of them in total. Two snipers, two with an assault rifle and one guy with a pistol. As with a lot of enemies that we're facing lately, they also have immunity available, so it's generally a good idea to immobilize them before they can use that. As you can see, we're receiving quite the beating here, but so did our enemies and we only have two of them left. All in all, I think it's probably a good idea to take out both snipers first, that way you remove the two heavy hitters immediately, and as long as you keep the rest fairly immobilized, things shouldn't be too hard. Also, like with all fights that take place outside, be careful when using abilities like Lift, those can quickly catapult your enemies far far away, and then you'll have to chase after them for the kill. This group of scavengers was apparently guarding a crashed probe and we have now salvaged that for a few upgrades and can now return to the Mako for our next destination. On the minimap it is marked as an anomaly and well maybe that anomaly can help us figure out why an entire survey team has gone missing here. And this at least shines a bit of a light on the mystery. We now find ourselves next to a transmitter tower. And this one has apparently messed around with the survey team's GPS satellites, which are now crashed around the area and sadly not salvageable. However, the transmitter tower here does not explain what happened to the survey team. So I think it's on us to find that out now. And what better place to start looking for clues than this survey camp. Alright, looks like the camp is deserted. That way we can at least rummage around undisturbed. According to these data logs, the survey team unearthed some kind of alien technology. Guess we should head to the excavation site then. 
And doesn't that sound a bit familiar? A survey team unearthing some kind of alien technology, and all of a sudden everything goes south. I of course don't want to spoil things here, but if you now think that all of this will surely have a happy ending, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Thankfully the survey team has left a few supplies for us to find here, and don't you worry, they won't need them anymore. Now we can do just like Caden said and head to the dig site to see what they found. The dig site here is inside a mineshaft, so expect the standard layout for that. This right here, by the way, is also a good point to save your game. Alright, inside, first things first, let's go to the inventory. We can slightly improve the upgrades on Shepard's assault rifle here, and we can also change both Caden and Liara to sledgehammer rounds on their pistols. That is because knocking enemies to the ground will be quite important in the next few minutes. Since we haven't used Liara in a while, we can also upgrade a few other things with her, including her biotic amp as well as a few armor upgrades. After also upgrading the biotic amp on Caden, we are now ready to move, so let's head deeper into the mineshaft. The first room here doesn't hold anything of value, but it's still not a bad idea to familiarize yourself with its layout, as you might be forced to retreat back here in a bit. For now, we can proceed onwards and into the main area, and feast our eyes upon the side of several husks. Ten in total, and this will be the first wave of enemies in this area. Now, there are two strategies to tackle this fight. One of them is to rush into the main room, and use its rather large area to always keep moving and evade the husks. The other tactic is to simply let them come to you, and use this tunnel here as a choke point. As you can see, we're starting with the ladder, but later on we'll switch things up again. We are also making extremely liberal use of our biotic abilities, and having two throws and two lifts available against this rather large group of enemies is one of the main reasons I brought both Caden and Liara along. As you can see though, despite a rather tight spot for our enemies to go through, we can get swarmed pretty easily here, so if you go for this approach, then micromanaging your companion's abilities is very important. In that regard, the rush in and evade strategy is a bit more forgiving, as you will almost always be able to outrun the husks. The downside to that would be that you would kind of stretch out the horde a bit, and your throws, lifts and singularities would probably hit fewer enemies. I've heard of this before. Whatever alien technology the survey team unearthed must have turned them into mindless fanatics, machine cultists. Whatever they found, it's long gone now. Uh, very interesting to see how Liara describes the husks here, especially beginning things with I've heard of this before. If I'm not mistaken, Liara, then you've actually encountered husks in person. Also, calling them mindless fanatics is probably a bit too far away from the truth, as the husks are more or less geth zombies. And I believe fanaticism is definitely not what drives them. Anyway, there are in total three crates to loot in this area, and while they are not necessarily well hidden, they are also not really placed in plain sight. With the contents of all three now in our possession, we can proceed and activate the next group of husks. This back area over here is one that you should definitely avoid no matter which approach you choose in the first fight, as getting too close to one of the doors here will activate another group of ten husks. And having those join a group that's already chasing you is likely not going to end well. Here you can also see a slightly different strategy for dealing with the husks, running around the room and hitting them with whatever biotic ability we have available at the moment, that normally works quite well. If you go for this, it is advisable though to keep an eye on your squad members, and if necessary make them fall behind a bit. Especially since Liara and Caden are pretty fragile, it would be disastrous if they got caught up in the enemies. You can also see here how this approach really leaves all the husks scattered around the room, which is likely something you want to avoid if your array of biotic abilities is rather limited. That would for example be the case if you had only one biotic squad member for this fight. We however have two, both of them already with very good ability cooldowns, and so we don't really have to worry too much about stretching our opponents out too thin. As you can see, we have now been forced to retreat back to the entrance area, and we could actually retreat even further here and use the tunnel as a choke point again, but I think the group right here is manageable enough for the moment. We could also continue to run around the room, this would also allow us to detonate a few more explosive canisters, but those also don't do too much damage, and it's always a bit of a risky business depending on where your squad members are positioned. 
Also what I found interesting is that we actually do continue to receive money for killing the husks here, even though we are at the credit limit. In comparison, we no longer receive money for surveying mineral deposits for example, but in this fight right here it seems like the game hasn't registered yet that we can't really carry more credits. That's just something I noticed on the side here. We are now finally down to a relatively small group of enemies against us, and that means we can now once again engage a bit more, and then hopefully eliminate the rest of them fairly quickly. And here we are, we just took care of the entire Exogeny survey team, or at least of what was left of them. The message here also tells us that the team was, very obviously, turned into husks, but that it still remains a mystery how the devices that were used for that ended up on this world. And even though the assignment is finished now, we don't want to leave the area just yet. We can now explore the tunnels where the second group of husks came from, as both of those hold a bit of loot for us. Inside the first room we can find a sludge canister with two high quality sniper rifles as well as a heavy armor. And let's quickly fast forward ourselves down into the other room. And here we have a secure crate locked behind average decryption and inside a bit more high level equipment. And that concludes our business down here in the mineshaft. Let us now speed things up again until we're back on Trebin's surface. By the way, if your shepherd specializes in shotguns, then fights like these are where you should shine, as a powerful shotgun with the right upgrades can really turn the husks into ragdolls. Alright, here we are, back outside, and before we continue, let's open up the inventory. And in here we can upgrade Shepard's armor. This one has slightly weaker shields, but the difference is barely noticeable. And in the other two statistical categories it's a substantial upgrade. Now we can go back into the Mako and continue to travel to the last two locations of interest on Trebin. The first one is somewhat close by and as we can already see from a distance, it's another mineral deposit. To be precise, a uranium deposit, the second one actually in this episode. Remember we also found one earlier when scanning planets in the galaxy map. What's left now is our last destination and don't turn off just yet because that one holds a small surprise for us. And as we approach here you might already be able to guess what that surprise is going to be. Yep, say hello to another Thresher Maw. I don't think I have to explain tactics here too detailed. We fought a number of Thresher Maws before and the general strategy is always the same. Once the enemy is above ground we want to position the Mako on one of these small hills and then we want to absolutely make sure to stay there while rocking the Mako back and forth for as long as needed. And for as long as needed we will also slightly speed up the action here. And once we have the Thresher Maw at low health, we can step outside for the kill on foot. Caden actually falls victim to the Thresher Maw's acid spit here, but once we're back inside the Mako, he's instantly revived. Now over to the left here, our last point of interest awaits. Recovering this ancient debris reveals another Turian insignia, and with that we have now done everything we can on the surface of Trebin. And that means time to return to the Normandy. And with Trebin and the missing survey team assignment now successfully completed, we can make the cut in this episode. Like I said in the beginning, I'm not quite sure we'll be able to hit level 50 with only one more assignment before returning to the Citadel, but expect a return to the Citadel as soon as possible. For now I can say thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.